Welcome to SOS Media, your number one source of the latest news, opinions, and in-depth investigations that dig deeper into today's developing stories around the globe. The media today is all filled up with various comments and opinions resulting from R. Kelly's recent telephone call to the WAC 100 media platform, in which he passionately elaborated the impacts that his stolen jail information had on the New York trial and consequent sentencing. Robert Sylvester Kelly was sentenced by United States District Judge Ann Donnelly to 30 years in prison on September 27, 2021 following six weeks of trial, a federal jury in Brooklyn, New York convicted R. Kelly of all nine counts of a superseding indictment, charging him with racketeering predicated on criminal conduct. R. Kelly's lawyer Jennifer Bonjean said that R. Kelly was devastated by the sentence and saddened by what he had heard. He is a human being and he feels what other people are feeling but that doesn't mean that he can accept responsibility in the way that the government would like him to and other people would like him to, because he disagrees with the characterizations that have been made about him, she said. R. Kelly didn't testify at his trial but his then lawyers portrayed his accusers as girlfriends who weren't forced to do anything against their will and stayed with him because they enjoyed the ways of his lifestyle. When R. Kelly was arrested in July 2019 in Chicago and held in Chicago's Metropolitan Correctional Center, a Bureau of Prisons employee only known as Officer A to date, had been assigned to the Thompson Correctional Center from May 2019 until December 2019 when she retired, according to the affidavit. The Metropolitan Correctional Center staff realized in November 2019 that blogger Tasha Kay had revealed information about R. Kelly, attainable from a BOP system that contains records of inmate calls, visitation logs, emails and funds the document said. An eventual review of access logs from July 15, 2019 through January 8, 2020 showed that at least 60 Bureau of Prisons employees had accessed those records, including the BOP employee in question. That person had accessed R. Kelly's records 153 times between July 15, 2019 and December 12, 2019 even though the officer was not assigned to the MCC and had no official reason to access them. In R. Kelly's call to WAC 100, he emphasizes this ordeal. Officer then sent all of my jail records to a blogger named Tasha Kay who stated out of her own mouth that she shared my jail records with federal witnesses in my New York and Illinois case. She said it out of her own mouth and it's out there on the podcast and everything, R. Kelly said. Now Officer A violated policy and procedure but once Tasha Kay distributed those jail records to the government prosecutors and among the federal witnesses, it became a federal crime issue and Officer A became an accessory before the fact, he added. Officer A provided the tools for Tasha K to commit the federal crime because Tasha K wouldn't have had my jail records to show federal witness if Officer A had not given them out to her, R. Kelly commented. Now, the question we could be harboring is whether these things we're talking about have an effect on R. Kelly's charges. Let us try to look at this illegal action and try to deduce the impacts it has on R. Kelly's case. Realistically, you can't have a witness up there standing for you after she has been exposed and has seen several lovely conversations, that you have secretly had with your other girlfriend for over a period of six months emphasizing to her that she is the one you feel better with. When she saw and read this information she became angry and decided to revenge by turning her guns onto R. Kelly. This witness eventually decided to fight R. Kelly and ultimately cooperated with the feds in order to achieve her goal. This alone qualifies the witness to be referred to as a tainted witness, especially after this key witness contributed over 90% on the weight of the sentence. Taint is a term used in the legal field with reference to evidence that has been tainted or ruined in some manner. The most common of such usage is with reference to evidence, testimony and identification by witnesses or confessions that have been obtained by law enforcement illegally. The illegality usually results from a violation of one's constitutional rights such as a violation of the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution protecting against unreasonable search and seizure, just like R. Kelly's predicament. What remains intriguing us though is the fact that this particular witness had earlier on put up a very strong fight for R. Kelly, rubbishing all the accusations against him and publicly wondering why people thought she was being mistreated yet she felt she was living the best of her life. Suddenly, Just after six months down the road this very person makes an unexpected sudden U-turn allegedly claiming she had told lies before. It will be worse a situation when we confirm that the prosecution and the jury had already seen this leaked information pre-trial. 
This won't be right at all because it is not acceptable under the United States Constitution for one to break the law in an effort to enforce the law. I can really see that R. Kelly will technically kick this case out of the window during the appeal proceedings. It's important to know that if an accused gets off on a technicality, the prosecutor has failed to establish the case against the accused, who then emerges without a guilty verdict and is therefore innocent. Technicality refers to the requirement of the law and those requirements exist to protect the rights of citizens. R. Kelly's rights to have his information secured and contained have been infringed on and will thus have to hold the state accountable. The accused BOP officer was reported to the point that they did a search warrant examining both her computers, and found out that she indeed did retrieve and distribute R. Kelly's confidential information. They found out that Tasha K. indeed received this information from this BOP disciplinary hearing officer. This was not just some security guard but a disciplinary hearing officer who was rationally an equivalent of a judge in a bureau of prisons. She knew exactly what she was doing when she gave Tasha K. this information. Tasha K. also knew what she was doing because she actually said it out of her mouth, that she shared the leaked R. Kelly documents with the government witnesses and prosecutors in both his New York and Chicago cases. To make matters worse, they did this prior to his trial proceedings meaning that, their wish was not to let R. Kelly win at all cost. This girlfriend turned witness was their password for achieving this goal and eventually, it is not surprising that this particular witness was 90% of R. Kelly's case. So, one wonders if it's justice for R. Kelly to serve 30 years in jail just because he was a player whose playing cards were tampered with. Meanwhile, the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit held at the Thurgood Marshall United States Courthouse, at 40 Foley Square in the city of New York on July 10, 2023, granted in part the motion for the government's move for leave to file an oversized opposition brief of no more than 30,000 words. The government was allowed to file an oversized brief up to 25,000 words. As we continue to witness new developments occurring towards R. Kelly's appeal proceedings, we can just stay optimistic that this time this relevant truth will be put into consideration. We strongly believe that R. Kelly and his legal team will be able to outline all the injustices, misinterpretations of the law, cases of lying and witness tampering that have marred all R. Kelly's legal proceedings, and that the law, truth and justice will this time along prevail. It has been a long wait and we can't wait any longer to see R. Kelly regain his deserved freedom. Thank you for watching today's video brought to you by SOS Media. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of our videos. Also remember to leave your comment about today's topic in the comment section below.